Hey everybody, we are about to get into episode 11 of Call Time Atlanta. Today's guest is Mike Panuski. Mike Panuski is an actor. He's been in the business for 31 years. He has been in all kinds of productions, film, television. He's appeared recently on Halt and Catch Fire, Madam Secretary, Blue Bloods, Drop Dead Diva, so many television shows, and he's done a lot of good work. I'm really stoked about having Mike on the show today, but first, I have a few people I'd like to thank. First, I want to thank Amanda Flower. She is membership director of City Club of Buckhead. You can find them online at cityclubofbuckhead.com. City Club of Buckhead is a private business and social club located in the heart of Buckhead's financial district. Amanda Flower is the membership director there. It's a wonderful place to be. Amanda is sponsoring this episode that you're about to see, so please check them out online and ask for Amanda when you do. I also want to thank Kyle Rollins of Mammoth Solutions. Mammoth Solutions is a digital marketing and branding agency and they are Call Time Atlanta's new partner. So I'm very excited about that. Thank you, Kyle, for all of the help that you've been to the show. And lastly, I want to thank JP Marston of Actor Taping Services, which is where I am right now and where we're going to record the episode. If you need your auditions taped, you should hit him up at actortapingservices.com. And now let's get to the show. Mike Panuski, thank you for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. This is great. Yeah, I have been wanting to have you on the show for a long time, so I'm glad thank to you. have you here today. Glad it worked out. And just for the, the viewers, I want to read a little bit of your bio. And okay. I, I'm really only going to read a little bit because it's so long. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing my research and looking at you on IMDb and some of your videos, and mm -hmm. just you've been working in this industry for a long time. So. A long time. You have recently appeared in The Good Wife, mm -hmm. Madam Secretary, Blue Bloods, Halt and Catch Fire, mm -hmm. The Red Road, Devious Maids, Army Wives, Drop Dead Diva. I mean, I could go on and and on. It's so it's like exhausting to read your bio. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm a very lucky guy. Yes, you are. But actually, the first question I wanted to ask you is, to what do you attribute your success? Uh, obviously, there's got to be a good deal of good fortune, you know, um, but I think you also do a lot to make your own. Uh, I have a wonderful team of people that support me, uh, agents, uh, people in the casting departments, uh, obviously my family, uh, very supportive of me doing this. Um, uh, and I, but I think it's all driven by the fact that you, you have to remain diligent. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's one of those things where once an acting job is over, you you got to get back in line and you go back and do it again and and, right. and and that process can be arduous and it can be frustrating but uh, you have to understand that's just what it is mm -hmm. and you have to be willing to do it uh, and then I think uh, it also requires that you stay up with current trends like this latest trend over the last several years is the whole world of self taping and that the the casting process is, is using much more technology than they've ever had and you got to keep up with that so you, you can compete mm -hmm. and and I've always tried to stay up with that so that I can stay relevant and I can stay uh, up to date on what's going on and how the processes work and not get left behind um, and adapted you, I think being able to adapt is absolutely necessary can you give some examples of what's different now? I mean, we all know we're self-taping. Mm -hmm. I'm an actor. Obviously, you're an actor, so I know what goes on in the audition world. But what is different enough that you need to make sure you're not being left behind? Right? Well, it's as obvious as when I first moved here to the southeast, what we all had to do to audition was to drive, mm -hmm. either to Wilmington or Orlando or New Orleans or Nashville, wherever the job was, you had, and wherever the audition was, right. you had to be in the room. So we all were putting thousands of miles on our car every year, or carpooling, or paying for hotels here and there, and that was the process. Mm -hmm. Well, that's changed a lot now to where you have to be able to either have access to taping services or have a setup of your own because a lot of the casting process now happens solely on tape. Mm -hmm. uh, there are very, very few in-person auditions. So you have to adapt to that, but also uh, you have to learn the technology that, that goes along with that if, if you choose to. You don't have to have your own setup, but even if you don't, you have to have a basic understanding, and I think this now needs to be a part of actor education going forward. You have to have a basic understanding of how to shoot something. Mm -hmm. So that if your agent sends you a piece, a, an email with an audition that says, this, age, this casting director is asking for this to be shot in 16 by 9 and 1080p and they want an MOV file, you need to know what that means. Mm -hmm. Because if you go to a taping service and they shoot it square, 
in standard def and it's an MP4 file, you have to know, no, I can't send that. Right. Because, but if you don't have that basic understanding, you don't know that. Right. And so you at least have to have that. And then, of course, if you want to have your own setup, which gives you more flexibility, that's a whole other level of knowledge you have to learn. Mm -hmm. But then also, I think it, it requires you to have to adapt in what you're putting forward. I know one of the things that I got pretty good at over the years was being in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, a work in the room, shaking hands, talking. You know, obviously, as I'd been in the business for a while, Many more times than not, I'd run into people that I had worked with or either had connections to people I'd worked with. So you'd get a little time to chit-chat about that and right. just kind of work the room and, and build some goodwill that will enhance your interest in or their interest in you, casting right. you right. and working with you. We don't you. have that opportunity. We don't have that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what I tell actors now is, is basically what you get is a bullseye and one arrow. Mm-hmm. And go put it on tape. And you better hit it. And you better hit it. <laughs> but but yeah. you don't know where the target is. Right. Right. Because you have no one giving you feedback. That's the other thing about being in the room mm -hmm. is that, you know, you got to go in there with the mentality that I got one shot, maybe two. So if they give you a second, typically it comes with, that was great or that, that was really good. However, it doesn't really fit with these pieces, that whatever down here, because many times you don't get the whole script. You don't know that. Well, great. Now I know. We do it again. And then hopefully, if you're on your game, Great, wonderful, fantastic. Mm -hmm. You get a chance to adjust. You get a chance to put your best foot forward for that role. Mm -hmm. We've lost that. Yeah. So you have to adapt in what you put on camera and that you make your absolute best effort to give the best you can with the information you mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. And then if there's places where you have to fill in the blanks, you, you, know, you, you do the best you can. But also, at least what I choose to do is that I want to create something that when it's over, I'm really proud to put out there. Yes. That I feel good about yeah. and that I feel like um, I enjoyed doing. Mm -hmm. That was fun. I hope it's what they're after, but I also hope that even if it's not, they'll see something that they like enough that they'll maybe bring me in for a callback, maybe still consider me, or possibly that they don't do this very often. They'll say, could you redo it and try X, Y, Z? So at least you're in a good place by putting your best work forward right. every time. Right, right. Yeah, and I've struggled with that myself as an actor. I mean, A lot of people do. Yeah, I, I tape here, we're at Actor Taping Services. I tape mm -hmm. with JP, who's helping us out today, mm -hmm. and he can tell you that sometimes I come in here and I struggle to get it either immediately or within the first few tries, and then other times I think I nail it on the first one or two, but it is a struggle because you don't know exactly, you're not getting that live feedback. Right. Yeah. Right. So. It's hard to it's hard to get the full context mm -hmm. when you don't have the input of everybody who's going to be directing you or steering the ship mm -hmm. as they create the product, whatever right. it is. Yeah. It's, it's hard. So yeah. you know that's raised some new challenges, and and but you know you just got to adapt. Talk a little bit about you mentioned this a little earlier. What you need to do as an actor in between those times that you're auditioning to mm -hmm. to keep yourself in the forefront and keep your name out there. Mm -hmm. I know people do a lot of their own mini-series or what have you. So talk Web about- Web series? Yes. Like, like this right here? Well, yes, this is, yes. This is an example, but it's not, we're not acting here. So I no. kind of count that, but, but not it, exactly. It's, a, it's, a, it's an, another example of the fact that it is so easy mm -hmm. now to create your own product, whatever it is, right. and put it out on the web with free worldwide distribution. Mm -hmm. And I know my daughter is just getting started in the business, and especially young actors, because that space is really best for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, guys like me, I know some guys. I know some guys in New York that do this great web series called Lords of the Playground. Let's give them a little plug here. Right. It's called Lords of the Playground. They play two dads. <laughs> mm -hmm. The whole thing takes place on a bench in the park. And they're two, uh, I don't know if they're stay-at-home dads, but they have the kids, and they're sitting there next to the strollers and the gear. And it's just a series of vignettes of the dads dealing with the kids. Right. And it's hysterical. Huh. It's really funny. Yeah. And, but it's wonderfully simple. But that's what the net provides for people. And if you have the means, if you have an idea, there's no excuse not to do it. It is so much easier now for people to create a showcase for themselves than when I was starting out. Mm -hmm. You know, when we wanted to do a showcase, we had to run a space. We had to get a bunch of money together. And then we had uh, to buy food and booze because they ain't going to come unless there's free food and free booze. <laughs> and then you had to... Um, send out mailers, I mean, actual physical mailers to get people there. Right. That was really tough. Now, for little to no money, 
you can put up something really, really sweet on the web and attach it to an email or put a link in an email and market yourself or put it on your Facebook page or mm-hmm. put it on wherever you choose to promote yourself and, and build an audience, which is so much easier. Mm-hmm. Um, and my daughter always reminds me of the girls on um, uh, Comedy Central that do Broad City. I don't know if you're familiar with Broad City. Yes, yes. They started out as a couple of girls in Upright mm-hmm. Citizens Brigade who weren't getting in the main stage show, and they started putting their own stuff on the web. Mm-hmm. And now they were just nominated for uh, uh, an award for best comedy series. I think it was the LA Critics yeah. Circle, I think. Yeah. And they're hot. They're, they're, they're smoking. So, yeah. you know, it's doable and it's possible, more so than ever before. And if you have the means, mm-hmm. I, I think it's a, it's a great place to showcase yourself. Don't wait for the phone to ring. Yeah. The worst thing an actor does most of the time is just wait for their agent to make their phone ring or mm-hmm. send them an email. Don't. You know, do something to get their attention. And they want to know that you're not just waiting on them. Exactly. They will work harder for people that they know are out there either creating product or networking, mm-hmm. building relationships, because that helps everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, you got to yeah. do that. Absolutely. So I guess what we've lost maybe in terms of being in the room and having that feel for being in the room we've gained in terms of visibility and distribution mm-hmm. now we can be seen by many more people other than the just the casting directors or just the agencies sure so there is that upside to it that we didn't have before well and recently i saw an article where the uh, some they interviewed some casting directors at south by southwest who were asked about where they find new talent and they they commented that more and more now the studio execs will tell them to go troll youtube hmm. And they, they, they go find new talent there. Okay. There you go. <laughs> the wheels are turning. Um, some people may have seen that. But, yeah, yeah, so I don't know that everybody does that. But, right. but the fact that at that high a level they're being directed to go look there, yeah. you know, that, the, the tide is turning. So mm-hmm. put some good stuff out there. Well, and they know that they can find, A, they can find interesting work out there. Mm-hmm. But by, by definition they're going to find people who are, who are hustling to get it done, too. Yes. So they probably want to They're self-starters. They're right. self-motivated. They don't mm-hmm. have to be pushed. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and hopefully they'll come with a built-in audience. Yeah. 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 I read somewhere recently, um, as I've been trying to market this show and do other projects, I read somewhere recently that if you only have a small audience, then the way to get a bigger audience is to borrow somebody else's. And that's really true. Yeah. You know, you form these partnerships and you get out there and, and, it, ha- and it works. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you, you, a lot of see, you see a lot of crossover television shows, uh, you know, people from other shows guesting on a certain show because they want to pull their audience. Right. Um, they pr- cross-promote during the shows, mm-hmm. uh, when, during the commercials even, you know, because you want to draw an audience over. If the context and the subject matter is similar, then, you know, like uh, they'll promote Big Bang Theory during Halt and Catch Fire because mm-hmm. it's, they're nerd shows, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and it's the same kind of audience. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's... Yeah. It's it's not a new idea. Yeah, it pays to partner up. Yes. So uh, talk a little bit about some of the roles you've done. Have you had any that really hit your heart? Uh, a lot of them have in, in many different ways. I, somebody asked me this the other day, and one of the things that always comes to mind is the fact that when I was a little kid, the first thing I ever wanted to be was an astronaut. Mm. Mm. And um, so... Several years back, I got to do a couple of shows about the space program. Oh. Uh, one was a show called The Cape, uh, which was about the shuttle program, and then I was in uh, From the Earth to the Moon. Mm-hmm. And that was a real rush because when I was a kid, what I used to do, and I grew up in California, I used to get up at 4, 3.34 in the morning to watch the launches live in Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, back when you only had three channels and they, you didn't have a VCR. Mm-hmm. You had to, if you didn't watch it live, you are going to miss it. So uh, my parents loved me rattling the house at that time of day to watch <laughs> the launches, but I would get up and watch them. And so to do From the Earth to the Moon, where I was the flight surgeon at Mission Control, during the program that I used to get up and watch as a little kid was mm-hmm. just, yeah. it was just awesome. You know, and I got to do a couple of westerns, which you know, as as a little kid, you know, you, everybody played cowboys and Indians, mm-hmm. and when you get to dress up and do that, and they actually let you shoot a gun, and, <laughs> and that's well, that kind of stuff is really fun. Yeah. Um, I uh, you know, I'm I'm really proud of the the shows that I've been able to work on now. I mean, the stuff I've been able to do on The Good Wife is is great. They give me great material, and they're great people to work with. Uh, I, I think when you ask something like that, I guess what I think about is the people. 
And um, I've gotten to work with some extraordinary actors and just good people. I mean, good human beings that yeah. you, you don't mind spending 12, 14, 16 hours a day on a set with because they're just good people. Yeah. And they're good, you mm -hmm. know. And that's the other thing is that it, it makes you better when you work with good people. And I know all these places that I've been able to work with lately, uh, you know, i got to show up ready. I gotta, uh, it makes me better. And I, I like that. I like that challenge. I think mm -hmm. it's better for me. It's better for everybody. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I guess one of the things that I'm most grateful for and that touches my heart is that I'm still in the game. I mean, this is 31 years for me working professionally, mm -hmm. and not many people can say that. And I'm just incredibly grateful. Uh, I, I went to UCLA, and um, last fall there was a big get-together in L.A., which I happened to be in town for, of a few of us who had gone to school together. And we're kind of sitting around at one point, and, you know, I don't know if it was me or somebody kind of looked around and said, how cool is it that here we are all these 30 years later mm -hmm. and we're still in the game? I mean, and, and there are people there that are really vital, viable, vital players in the game. I mean, people of, of note who have done great work. And, you know, I have one of my dearest friends from college is now the CEO at DreamWorks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's just, it's great. I mean, I think we, we were little uh, we weren't little kids, we were college kids, <laughs> but we were kids, yeah. you know, who were, we worked in the scene shop together and we did the plays at school together and now, you know, we're, we're living our dream yeah. and I'm just, I'm just, that moves me as much as anything because uh, I'm just so grateful for that because I, I know how rare it is, I know uh, how special it is uh, and I enjoy the heck out of it and I'm just really lucky to be able to do it. Did you ever consider leaving the business? I did. I did. Wow. Nobody really asked, ever asked me that, but there was a moment uh, several years back when I was ready to walk away because, you know, like anybody, even somebody who's had a good success after a while, we all go through ups and downs, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'd gone through a pretty stressful period and uh, have a family and children to raise. And, um, and I got to the point where, you know, I'm starting to think, this is so stressful. Mm -hmm. Is it even worth it anymore, um, you know? Uh, because it wasn't happening. Was it interfering with your family life? Or well, it was. It was interfering with. It was just interfering with my with me because I was under so much stress all the time. I see. Yeah. And and that's not good for me, for my family, for anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly not making me a better actor. So um, you know, and it just wasn't happening. You know, it just was. I wasn't working enough to support the family and all. And so, somebody offered me a job. Mm -hmm. A real job. Doing what? Uh, working in the financial services industry doing, it was a sort of an acting job, but doing presentations to retirees about financial planning. Very lucrative. Yeah. Very lucrative. And uh, I thought, you know what? I, got, I just, you know, I got I to gotta think about this. I got. I really got to consider this because I have a family to support. And, and I'm a firstborn, so I'm hyper-responsible. Mm -hmm. and, and I take that responsibility very seriously. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, went through a period with my wife who was fantastic and just kind of broke it down and really, really talked it through because it wasn't something that would have allowed me to keep doing this even on a part-time level. Mm -hmm. It would have had to have been a clean break. Right. Wow. And um, we flushed it out and flushed it out. And even with everything we were going through, uh, I finally realized that I was only taking it for the money. Yeah. And and that's not the right reason to make a big career move mm -hmm. just for the money because mm -hmm. even if I did make the money after a while I'd be miserable mm -hmm. and even my wife knew that so to her credit she supported the fact that I turned it down mm -hmm. and what it did do however is it made me really turn everything on its head uh, shook up my representation I, I, I made a, a concerted effort to get connected up in New York I got new headshots I just changed everything up I figure okay you know uh, I can't sit here and blame everybody else. I got to do the stuff that I can do. So I, I changed everything up, and here, here we are. are yeah. And now you'd have to, I'd go away kicking and screaming at this point. So I could have been interviewing a financial planner. <laughs> you could have. Right you could have. Could have. That wow. wouldn't have been half as interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up on Call.